Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends and colleagues, now to something a little more peaceful <laughs> and nice. <laughs> uh, I'm also grateful for this opportunity to, <laughs> to um, give a report about a project which has, this one has been carrying on for a very long time. Uh, the Danish Halicarnassus project in present-day Bodrum on the west coast of Turkey, let's see if this works, uh, was initiated 50, 50 years ago in 1966 by Professor Christian Jeppesen from the University of Aarhus. Halicarnassus was the most important city in southwestern Asia Minor in antiquity. You can see it on the map, I think, just near to, oh, it does, it does, opposite the island of Kos. Um, its hinterland and inner Caria was inhabited by a mixed population of Greeks and Anatolian Carians who spoke a language that has not yet been entirely deciphered. The ancient Helicarnassians boasted in, particularly, in particular of their famous writers and poets, among whom are Herodotus, the father of history, Paniasis, the poet, and the historian Dionysius Halicarnassus. But what has made Halicarnassus so important in modern scholarship is its great flourishing in the late classical period when the Persian governor Mausolus made Halicarnassus the capital of the province of Caria for a period of about 50 years from about 370 to about 320 BC. Mausolus refounded the old city of Halicarnassus on a new and magnificent scale as probably the most splendid city of its time. Mausolus and his planners and, and architects introduced a number of important innovations in Greek architecture, among which are that the entire city is laid out as an entity, a Gesamtanlage or Gesamtkunstwerk, also, often also called like a theater. Secondly, uh, important new building types are introduced in the Greek world. Especially uh, important among these are the palace and the dynastic tomb of the ruler. And finally, new designs and new techniques were introduced, which remain standard in Greek architecture and may be seen both later in Athens and in Alexandria. The Danish Halicarnassus project has, during its first 25 years, under the direction of late Professor Jeppesen, focused on the tomb of Mausolus, the Mausoleum, which was counted among the seven wonders of the world. During the following 25 years until present, the project has been directed by myself and focus has been on the new city of Mausolus and its buildings. As from 2015, Peter Paulsen is taking over and will be in charge of the Danish Halicarnassus project. Peter has Paulson has already done very comprehensive studies on the later periods in Halicarnassus and published extensively on Halicarnassus in late antiquity when the city experienced a second very great, great flourishing. In addition to such studies aimed at specific periods, very extensive research is being done by Signe Isai on the inscriptions of Halicarnassus, by Anna Maria Carstens on the tombs of the Halicarnassus Peninsula, by John Lund, Jakob Heute, Maria Berg-Brise, Leif Erik Vogt on the pottery from Halicarnassus. Conservation works have mainly been carried out by Benny Berg from the Danish National Museum together with Steffen Christiansen from the University of Aarhus. The project has during, its, um, during all periods been supported by many other colleagues than those mentioned here and by a number of devoted students. In the following, I shall try to give a brief survey of 50 years of research in Halicarnassus, starting chronologically with the mausoleum of Halicarnassus. The mausoleum, the tomb of Mausolus, <coughs> Professor Jefferson's fieldwork on the mausoleum lasted from 1966 to 1977, Seven, and the work on the publications continued until 2004. The main results may be summarized as follows. The tomb of Mausolus was destroyed by Western crusaders in the 15th century who built a splendid castle in the harbor of Bodrum from its remains. 
Only a very few pieces of the sculptures that once adorned the building are preserved, and these can presently be seen in the mausoleum room at the British Museum. The excavations cleared the foundations and the cutting for the burial chamber, which you see in the middle of the picture. Um, from these remains and from thousands of fragments of marble, Jeppesen managed for the first time to create a detailed picture of how the building originally looked. The mausoleum was situated in the northeastern corner of a huge terrace. It was constructed in a cutting in the living rock of about 32 to 38 meters and consisted of three main elements. A podium of about 25 meters in height, a peristyle of 36 columns of about 10 meters, and then on top a step pyramid carrying a quadriga uh, drawn by four horses in monumental size. The burial chamber was situated below ground and the monument was surrounded by an underground system of rock-cut channels, or tunnels rather, which kept the burial chamber dry. Sculptures by the most famous Greek architects of the time were placed on all levels as freestanding statues and as reliefs as indicated on this reconstruction by Jeppesen. After the conclusion of the Danish mausoleum excavations, um, the mausoleum site was converted into an open-air museum and a small exhibition building and storeroom uh, was constructed next to the large foundation cutting for the monument. It is possible here to see original fragments from all elements, all parts of the monument. Of particular, interest, of particular importance is that the closer study of the mausoleum and its architecture in a wider context has shown beyond doubt that the mausoleum was not merely a solitary product of a megalomanic, eccentric Persian governor, but it constitutes the beginning of a new era in Greek architecture, the Ionian Renaissance, which was going to have a long-lasting consequence and with, which is uh, reflected in later Roman writing. The mausoleum was situated in the very center of the new capital of Mausolus, and it must have formed part of the general city plan from the start. The city was still famous for its laid out, layout in Roman times, and the Roman writer Vitruvius has a highly unusual and very detailed description of Halicarnassus in his important book, De Architectura. After completion of Jefferson's mausoleum project, it has therefore been the main aim of the Danish Halicarnassus team to investigate this new city of Mausolus. These investigations have been carried out in close collaboration um, with the Archaeological Museum of Bodrum and under the direction of the Directorate of Bodrum Museum. This organization has given us possibilities beyond the normal as we have been allowed to work on rescue excavations at specific interesting points in Bodrum and we have been asked by the museum to assist in publishing important finds in areas um, <coughs> Uh, not usually accessible for foreign archaeologists. The Turkish authorities and the staff of Bodrum Museum have during the last 28 years shown the Danish team extraordinary hospitality and generosity. Among the places, among the places we have, investigate, in, have investigated, most of the places which you see on the map, in fact, among them um, are a late Roman house, the late Roman house of Caridemos, the Salmachis fountain, which is mentioned in several, by several Roman writers, and from the time of Mausolus, the palace of Mausolus and the fortifications of Mausolus. Most recent and still ongoing are our investigations and publication works on the palace of Mausolus and on the fortifications of Mausolus. The Palace of Mausolus was situated below the Crusader Castle, and as the museum needed information about the location of ancient remains in the area, we were able to do excavations within the walls of this historical monument. 
In two campaigns, we investigated a great terrace wall of similar workmanship as that of the great mausoleum terrace, and we excavated substantial remains of strong foundations uh, for a monumental structure, as well as walls of what seemed to have been domestic quarters of the palace. Remains of submerged harbor installations have only been documented very preliminary yet, although highly interesting. You see the submerged ancient mole here uh, inside, the modern, inside the modern harbor of Bodrum. During the fieldwork, we realized that an important sanctuary of Apollo must have been situated on top of the rock above the Palace of Mausolus. Architectural remains of a fine early classical temple were identified, and fragments of inscriptions were found that once must have been placed in the sanctuary of Apollo as public decrees on marble slabs. The fortification uh, of Halicarnassus consists of a wall, of which you see a stretch in the foreground of this picture, and it has in most places a ditch, excavated ditch in front of the wall, running for about seven, and it runs for about seven kilometers around the city. Dozens of strong towers were erected along the circuit, and at a distance uh, of five to ten meters in front of the wall, um, you can see the uh, fortification ditch, um, <clears throat> which was excavated to prevent the siege towers of the enemy of, for instance, Alexander, who laid siege to the city, um, uh, to prevent them from taking the uh, siege towers up to the wall. The most impressive part of the city wall is the main west gate, the so-called Mindos Gate, or Tripilon Gate, which consists of a gate yard protected by two advanced towers, each of about 100 square meters in plan. This particular place is, one of the is where one of the fiercest battles during the siege of Alexander the Great in 334 uh, took place, and it is vividly described by the historian Arian. It is not possible here to describe in any detail the results of the city investigations which have, has, uh, have taken place during so many years, but it may be concluded that we have investigated and published a practic practically all the places named on the map I showed a little while ago. And we can safely declare that we are beginning to have a good idea of what ancient Halicarnassus looked like. Finds of pottery show that in antiquity the place was inhabited during more than 2,000 years, from Mycenaean times uh, in the Bronze Age to about 700 AD. After this brief report on the archaeology of uh, Halicarnassus, I should like to discuss a little the importance of the mausoleum of the city of Halicarnassus in history, and also a little about the consequences, the impact of the Halicarnassus project, if I may so. <laughs> The Mausoleum and the Mausolus family were well known to the ancients, and the Mausoleum became known as one of the seven wonders of the world and inspired many Greek and Roman tomb monuments. The tomb of the first Roman emperor, Augustus, was called a mausoleum, which uh, literally means a Mausolus tomb. Um, and at the same time, Vitruvius wrote about Halicarnassus, about the Mausoleum, and about its architect, Pythias. After the Middle Ages, the subject gained new interest again in the early Renaissance. Already in 1374, Boccaccio published a book about famous women, De Claris Mulieribus, and he made Artemisia, the wife of, Ar of Marcellus, a role model for emancipated women in what has by some people been seen as the first feminist literature. She was portrayed in she was portrayed in paintings by Rembrandt and this one by Simone Vouet. Um, and at the same time, architects and art historians began making fanciful reconstructions of how they believed the mausoleum had looked and also about how they believed the city of Halicarnassus would have looked, would have appeared in the description by Vitruvius. 
The mausoleum continued to inspire modern architects even into the 20s and 21st century, as these examples will illustrate, showing the Standard Oil Building in New York, the Freemasons Building in Washington, the Parliament Building in Tokyo, Japan, and the Said Business School in Oxford, in the, below in the bottom. I think it may be concluded safely that Mausolus and the mausoleum had a long, unbroken life in European tradition until the present. So, so much about the importance of the monument, but what about 50 years of Danish research? Well, we have published uh, 13 books and I guess about 100 articles in relation to our work, Halicarnassus. But did, anyone, did anybody notice? <laughs> uh, I think so, and I think, if I may be allowed, I will uh, take a, bit, a, lit, uh, a look at this. I think we may be able to see the influence of Halicarnassus research in different kinds of literature, and not least in the bibliographies of some recent archaeological books. Jefferson's work on the mausoleum is now reflected in all standard books, as for instance the popular handbook by Richard Neer, of which you see a picture here, Art and Archaeology in the Greek World, which is read by students in classes in, Greek, in classical archaeology all over the world. In slightly more specialized books, as the British Museum book on Greek architecture and the sculpture by Jan Jenkins, you will find that the, workers, the works by Je Professor Jefferson and myself <laughs> are represented by 10 titles, <laughs> which is more or less the same as the total number of references to all other Danish publications since Brunstedt 200 years ago. <laughs> the Danish studies of the, of the city of Mausolus have also begun to enter the international research community in recent years in the new Italian book by Luigi Caglio called Asti, which is a treating, which treats uh, Greek cities and their developments, the city of Halicarnassus plays an important role and it has in its bibliography 10 articles of my own, mainly relating to the city of Halicarnassus. Finally, I would like to stress what can be obtained by one single publication, Signe Isaiah's publication of the inscription Salmaki's inscription from Halicarnassus has till now been followed up by foreign scholars in about 40 articles in English, Italian, French, German and Dutch, of which you see the titles here. It seems that scholars from all countries find that what is going on in Halicarnassus is very interesting and they refer to it in their books and teach it in the classes. But why do Halicarnassus and the mausoleum at Halicarnassus seem to be important to so many people? In my opinion, for the same reason as for which the Parthenon, the sanctuaries of Olympia and Delphi, the Colosseum and the Pantheon in Rome are important. These are landmarks in the formation of the Western civilizations to which we belong. The archaic temples in Western Asia Minor, not this one, <laughs> Uh, illustrates the birth of rationalism and European science 2,500 years ago, and therefore Aarhus Banagor, the most modern and technically uh, complex railway station in Denmark in the early 20th century, could, in 1926, be designed as a Greek temple, probably inspired by the Temple of Apollo near Miletos, north of Halicarnassus. The Parthenon Temple on the Acropolis of Athens illustrates the ideal of a democratic society of free and enlightened citizens and therefore has been the model for a number of uh, public buildings in Western countries, such as, for instance, the Lincoln Monument in Washington, uh, built at the same time as the railway station in Aarhus. The rail uh, mausoleum at Halicarnassus and the city of Halicarnassus illustrates something different from these two examples I just gave. Um, it marks the introduction into European civilization of the art of the ruler. This is art and architecture which has, which has as its main purpose to enhance and present the glory and the power of the mighty autocratic king. 
Therefore, this kind of art and architecture was welcomed and developed further by Hellenistic kings, Roman emperors, and later European kings and emperors. These buildings and monuments constitute historical facts in the development of the Western world, and they represent European ideas which continue be, to be a basic condition in Western civilization. They can, so to speak, never be undone again. Some see these inherited values as limitations, and some artists have even wanted to create specific anti-classical or unclassical art and architecture. But even an anti-classic art is linked to the classical past simply by taking issue in it. Modern Western civilization is the result of a very specific development which began 3,000 years ago in Greece. It was, already three, it was already 1,000 years old when Christ was born. By then, its most important qualities were long established, and many of these lived on both in Christian, Christianity and in the secular European culture. The Danish scholar Hans Jørgen Schanz has said it this way, Europe has two main sources, a Jewish Christian concerning its religion and a Greek Roman when it comes to European culture. In my opinion, opinion, even European religion is strongly influenced by Greek and Roman civilization. In order to act wisely and responsibly in a modern globalized and politicized world, I think it is of vital importance that Europeans are aware that their ideas and their values are not always universally acknowledged and accepted, because Western civilization is the result of a very specific development which started in Greece 3,000 years ago. We are not Vikings, I think, <laughs> and we are not very Christian, all of us, but we are all Greeks. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I was very fast, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very, very much, Paul, for uh, this uh, fascinating journey uh, from the mausoleum uh, to the present. Uh, and I think we can all learn some, uh, some, uh, something about uh, our roots and maybe also of our future. Are there any questions for Paul. Helene. You have been looking into the past of the Halkanassas project, but how do you see its future, Paul? Oh, that's not up to me. <laughs> no, I know that. I mean, I'll be on Sunday, so. <laughs> No, but uh, may, we, I will continue, of course, with the team. Um, so the future, I think um, it would be very nice to try some other aspects also. For instance, the Beard of Poland's focus on the later periods, the Roman periods especially, and the late Roman period, which is extremely important in Halicarnassus. I think there are very many possibilities there. You could also say, perhaps, that uh, for Interdisciplinary studies, the, what we have, those we have been working with until now is across the classical philologist because there are so many sources. We are working in a central area of the Greek world in a central period on art and architecture. So of course we have very many, we have very many texts to, to it and we have uh, to a very great extent been uh, focusing on these things. But I think perhaps after we have seen what is being done in prehistoric archaeology, it could be very nice also to extend our, our future uh, research to other aspects. aspects. For instance, uh, uh, the two populations in Halicarnassus, the Carians and the Greeks, are they reflected in burial customs? Are they reflected in the finds, the pottery? Did they have different cultures? And there are some things I would like very much also to, research, uh, to be researched into the relation with the, between the city, which was very big, and the rural areas uh, <clears throat> from where the, the inhabitants uh, got their income. The Cora, as you said, and the city. Um, so I think there, 
there's a whole new range of subjects which could be opened up now that, in a way, the mausoleum is, um, is finished. We excavate down to the naked rock, so there's no much. 